Hello everyone, it's Benny, and today I'm going to show you how you can build your very own redstone multiplier. The finished result is going to look a little bit something like this. It's pretty small, it's pretty fast, and it's pretty easy to use. So the way this works is you have two inputs, the two numbers you're multiplying. So just to show you, I'm going to put in 3, which is 2 and 1, times 11 which is 8, 2, plus 1. So, I have 3 times 11, and I'm going to hit the Multiply button. And as you can see, we now have an output. So this is 32 and 1, which is 33, and that is indeed what 3 times 11 is. So there you go. It's small, it's fast, it works, and now I'm going to show you how you can build this thing. So, the way this multiplier is going to work is it's pretty much going to do the same thing you would do if you were multiplying two numbers by hand. So, for instance, if you remember from grade school, if you multiply 12 by 12, you'd first multiply the 12 by 2 to get 24, then multiply the 12 by 1 to get 12 and add a 0, and then add those two numbers together to get the final result of 144. That's basically what the multiplier is going to do, except it's going to do it in binary, because that makes the circuitry a whole lot easier to build. So, the way a multiplication problem might work in binary is basically the same. You have the different digit places, so 1 plus 4 plus 8, that means this is 13, and this is 1 plus 2, so that's 3. So 13 times 3. I do 13 times 1, which is 13, 13 times 1, which is 13, add a 0 at the end, and then I add these two together in binary to get the final result of 32 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is 32 plus 7, which is 39. And that is indeed 13 times 3. This does make the inputs and outputs a little bit awkward to interpret if you're more used to working in decimal, but there are actually circuits that can convert decimal numbers into binary and back, if you're so interested in doing so. That's outside the scope of this tutorial, but something to keep in mind. So now that we have the basic idea of how we're going to do this, let's just go ahead and get started. Although, I'm going to build this a little bit backwards. And by backwards, I mean we're going to start by building the adder that's going to sum up all of our partially multiplied products at the end. So, I'm going to go build up a few blocks and go ahead and create the two inputs for our adder. So, these are the inputs right here. And these work pretty much how you'd expect. If they're on, it's 1. If they're off, it's 0. So now, what is 1 plus 0? That's 1, right? And 1 plus 1, that's 2, which in binary is 1, 0. So, if one of these is on, but not the other, I want 1. And if both of them are on, I want 0. An easy way you can do this is with comparators. So I'm going to put a wire connecting them and some comparators here in subtract mode and power them from the side. And this is just a neat little trick you can do to get exactly that functionality. If one of these is on, but not the other, there's a difference in signal strength. So, see, this is very weakly powered. And that same is true over here. But if they're both on, then the signal strength is the same, this is zero. So, one plus, well, really, this is the basic part of our adder. One plus zero is one, 1 plus 0, 1, 1 plus 1, 1, 0, which in the 1's place is just 0. So cool. So, the only other part you need for this adder to be complete is you need a way to handle this case. If I have 1 plus 1, that's 1, 0, meaning I need some way to signal to the other bit, hey, you need to add one more. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to invert this, the output of the XOR right here. And I'm going to say this 
is our carry. And you might think, whoa, wait a minute, Benny. But won't that also be on if both inputs are off? You're right. It is. And this is a problem. But bear with me for a moment. I have a plan. Because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sending this through a comparator. And if both inputs are off, I'm going to be sending a cancel signal through that comparator. So this torch right here, this will only be on if both inputs are off. Any other combination, torch is off, both on, torch is off, one on, torch is off. So any other combination, torch is off. So what I can do is I can take a repeater and send it to power the cancel part of, or well, the other input of the comparator. And then it will be zero. And now this will only be on when both inputs are on, and not in any other case. And this particular bit of logic is called carry cancel logic. It's an awesome way to make adders, and if you're interested in learning more in detail of how this works and why it works, or addition in general, I have other tutorials on that. But anyways, now we, in general you want carries to be able to go more than one bit. So I'm going to build a half slab tower. This will allow the carry signal to go forward, but not backward. And same story with the cancel. I want this to be able to go forward, but not backward. This will mean that I need to use a block there for the comparator to go through, but that's okay. So there. Whoops. Actually, let's put the one down here. Why not? So again, the cancel signal can go forwards, but not backwards. And there. Now all we need to do is XOR this, our out XOR output, down here, right there with the carry of the previous bit. And since I'm making this too high stackable, that'll be somewhere around right here. So I'm going to take the XOR output with the repeater, just like that. I'm going to block it off here, so there's no none of that. Which reminds me, right here, I need to make this a half slab so that the signal below can still pass up, and it'll still be stackable. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a torch, go down one, through here, block it off, and there. This way, under normal circumstances, the XOR output will go through just like normal. See? The torch is turning on when the XOR is on. But if the carry is on, this will force this to be off. And that's most of what we want. The other thing is, if the carry is on, and the XOR is off, we want an output. So I'm going to do this with a block here, and I'm again going to have sort of a half slab going up, so these two inputs are powering the same wire. And if the, if the carry is on, that's on. But if the XOR is on, this should be off. So I'm going to power it right here, and there. Basically this whole weird contraption of logic here is another XOR gate. It XORs the output of the XOR with the carry here. It's a little bit more it's a little bit of a more complicated way of doing it, but it achieves the same thing. So again, just to show you one last time, the XOR is on, this is on. If carry is on, it's on. If they're both on, it's off. So there you go, acts like an XOR gate, just a different way of doing it. And now all we have to do is find a way to stack this. Okay, as I hinted at a moment ago, I'm going to stack this with WorldEdit. Now if you don't have WorldEdit installed, that's okay. You can build sort of a 1-bit multiplier, or build this again, have a 2-bit multiplier, or something like that. That's a perfectly valid way to do it. You just won't have quite as big of a multiplier. So. I'm going to go right here, see this is one block below everything. I'm going to set that to position 1. And I'm going to go up here, see, one block above everything, set that to position 2. And there. Now what I should be able to do 
is go right here, copy, up one, up two, and paste, dash A. This way, error blocks don't overwrite anything. And, uh, okay, paste, whoops, dash A. Okay, now if everything has gone according to plan, I should have a basic 2-bit adder here. These inputs represent 1, these inputs represent 2. So if I do 1 plus 1, see, it carries, and it's, the output is in the 2-bit. Now if I have one more, see, output's up here, the carryout. And I can do other combos. I can do like this, that's 3, and add 2 plus 2, output's there, it's a little weak, but there. And there you go. So I'm just going to go ahead and stack this a few more times. So that's 3. If I, whoops, undo, that's not right. 3. And let's actually just make sure that didn't break anything. So 1 plus 1 plus 1. Carry all the way through. Good. Okay. So 3. 4. And uh, we have a little visitor here. Excuse me, great gamer. It's nice to see you, but I need the space. Five. Six. Seven. And finally, eight. And there, we now have... Oh, I left that input on. But yeah, we now have a basic... 8-bit adder that can do the final result of multiplication over there. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so the last thing we need to do with this adder before we get on with the rest of the multiplier is we need a carrier. Basically, a way to add one to whatever two numbers we're already adding together. So, what I'm going to do is first off I'm going to clean up this right here. We do not need the extra block there and there. And we also do not need that block there or this block here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this block and this block with snow or your favorite solid block. The reason is this is where we're going to power the carrier. Because, at, I mean, if you look, I'll try and get in here somewhere. This is where all our carries are powered, this tower right here. So we need a way to power it. And I'm going to do this pretty much with just a torch. So I'm going to put a torch right here. And yeah, I guess this works. And I can do it right here. Sure, why not? And lastly, I can add repeater right here. This is going to power the carry-in, or not, not the carry-in, the, this right here, what would otherwise be the carry. So we're powering the carry tower, and we're sending a signal to where the carry would usually go. And there you go, this is all we need for the carry-in. It's not as fast as the rest of the adder, but we don't need this part to be particularly fast, so that's okay. And there we go. That's pretty much everything we need to do for this adder part right now. So, now we have our adder complete. Whatever partial products the rest of the multiplier generates, we can add them together to get the final result. But, how do you generate those partial products? How do you do the basic multiplication operation in the first place? Find out next time in part two of this multiplication tutorial. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time.